You're listening to Podcateers. Welcome to episode 333 of Podcateers. This week we talk about new content coming to Disney Plus, an update on the state of Disney Parks, a new app that's helping us pass the time, we discuss the possibility of annual passes no longer being available, plus the Walt Disney Family Museum is launching a new escape room experience. We also announced some changes to our current Team Boat Willie fundraising efforts and talk about why we decided to make that change. We'd love for you to join the conversation because you'll be able to help us make a difference in a lot of people's lives over the next several weeks. You can leave a comment on the blog post over at podcateers.com slash 333 on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. Just search for Podcateers. You can also join us on our brand new Discord server. An invite link is available in the blog post for this episode or by going to podcateers.com and scrolling down on the homepage. Before we start, I'd like to take a quick moment to send a very special shout out and a thank you to the FGP squad, aka our podcast fairy godparents, because it's their monthly support via Patreon that help make these episodes of Podcateers possible. If you would like more information on how you can become part of the FGP squad family, you can get more information by going to podcateers.com slash FGP. Once again, a very special thank you to the FGP squad for their continued support. All right, uh, it's time to get this episode going. Super quick intro. I wanted to jump right in. So here we go. Here is episode 333 of Podcateers. Well, Halloween's officially over. We made yeah. it. We sur- yeah, I mean, we made it past Halloween. Uh, did you do anything fun? Uh, it was chill. I, uh, You know what? I did something different. I decided I'm going to watch a movie. Not just any movie. I'm going to watch a movie that I never thought I'd see in my life. I finally got to see it. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. Okay, what did you think? <laughs> um. Why didn't anyone tell me this was three hours long? Yeah, it's super long. (laughs) (laughs) No one told me this. And I'm watching and I'm like, when is this finished? (laughs) At the end where you like can't sleep, clown will eat me? No. Okay. All right. No. I I was like, okay. Actually, I thought the opposite. I didn't think there was enough clown. Yeah. It's really psychological. I think there's there's more of him in the second one but it really is more about the psychology behind you know Mm -hmm. what he was doing so that's cool so are you open are you gonna watch the second one now oh yeah i will i i'm totally open to it um i was told it's just as long and i'm like oh man (laughs) you definitely need an intermission in the middle Yeah, yeah i totally do you, but um, you can have a whole yeah. meal for that movie. You don't need just like snacks. You need like a full five course meal, right? With a big old <laughs> thing of coffee. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but that's gonna require more restroom breaks, though. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it was good. I liked it. I'm glad you finally saw it. That's a good way to cap off Halloween. Yeah. I mean, it was kind of the same for us. It was pretty chill. We didn't really do anything uh, outside of the house. I Mm -hmm. bought like a couple bags of candy just to have in the house so that uh, we could do a couple things with the boys. I had a couple of activities planned for them. Uh, But my sister-in-law made like a whole board game for them. Like she bought... um, I. I want to say it's a 16 by 20 frame, but it might be slightly longer. It might not be 16 by 20. It might be slightly longer than it is wide. But she went to Michael's and she bought like a canvas like for painting, right? And she created like board game pieces and she got little Halloween houses at like the dollar store or something like that and glued them in every spot to make the board game. She made cards for them so that they can draw random cards while they're like flipping dice or something like that. And each house had its own unique name and unique like spooky person. And 
like the it, it was basically trick or treating around the neighborhood. That's what the board game was based on. They were going around the neighborhood, and some houses gave them more candy than others. And her goal was that we would randomly put m- amounts of candy into each of these little houses. And as the boys played, depending on what house they landed on, they would pull that amount of candy into their candy bag. So sometimes they got one piece, sometimes three pieces, sometimes four pieces. But at the end, they had like their own candy stash from trick-or-treating around the neighborhood, which I thought was genius. Yeah. As you're describing this game, I- I'm like, I've one, I've never heard of this. Two... That is brilliant for having an indoor Halloween. That is brilliant because, you know, you think of different ways to be creative, um, especially like this year. That's awesome. Mike, can we, can I see a picture of this? Yeah, I'll send you a picture of it. Yeah, it was, th- this is awesome. It was really fun. Uh, I probably won't post it on social media. I don't know. Maybe I'll post it. I'll ask her if she's okay with it. But it like she branded it like for them specifically, and like, Aww, it was that's sweet. great. Like she spent about a month, I think, collecting items and shopping around, um, going to different places, finding it. Because the one other thing that she ended up doing was because it's meant for Halloween, she purchased battery powered leds that she strung mm-hmm. through the houses so that you flip a couple switches and the inside of the houses light up. So nice. it's super cool. I, I'm telling wow. you, it's, the boys like saw it, they flipped and they've now played it a good dozen times since they got it. And they just That's get so like, cool. it's at the point where they know the premise and they're taking candy out of their own bags and they're randomly throwing it into the different houses so that they end up with random candy. And at the end, they're just collecting all like both of their candy bags into one bucket, and they're just kind of eating from the same bucket at this point. So there That's was that. That's cool. And then uh, I put candy in a bucket, and then uh, I was going around the house and to the the doors that lead to the outside of the house, and I was standing behind the door, and they would come knock on any given door. They would say trick or treat and I'd give them some snarky remarks about what they were dressed as. And then I would toss candy and then I'd run to another door and then they'd go find me and they'd knock on that door and they would get something. So, I mean, they got a chance to to collect candy. Nobody else in our neighborhood was doing it. Uh, I saw a bunch of people getting super creative online with like these candy cannons and like tubes where they were like, you know, but we don't live like on a hill we don't anything like that where it's pretty flat and either way we checked outside and nobody was walking around so i mean we had candy available just in Mm -hmm. case uh and i had a couple baggies that i could like if somebody knocked and like ran away when i opened the door i had little ziploc bags that i put candy in so i could at least toss them at the kids but nobody came by like nobody was walking around our neighborhood so more candy for us. Not that I need it, but <laughs> I mean, more candy for us, I guess. Uh, and and then my my father-in-law had dropped off like a little care package for them with candy and some activities like coloring books and stuff like that for, for Halloween. And then they had a bunch of glow sticks. And nice. we... Like I I had always seen those videos on TikTok where people had glow sticks and they were like walking around in the dark and all you yeah. saw was like the glow stick person. I thought, okay, this has to happen. Like we're going to do this. <laughs> so I got painter's tape and I taped the shape of mm-hmm. the person, right? And then I taped it to their right. chest, a couple places on their arms and their legs. And then I fired up the Paint the Night soundtrack. And oh, nice. Melissa, I can't even <laughs> begin to tell you how happy it made me that in complete darkness, the boys were dancing. This one, you know what I'll do? I might actually put this one up on the Discord server. Nice. Because it, I mean, it just made me smile. <laughs> I just, I don't even know how to describe it. <laughs> it was one of the funnest things that I've done in the last few weeks. Uh, and they had a blast. 
all the little small things, their board game and everything that they got this year, they're like, this is like the best Halloween ever. And they're like so excited. That's cool. That's cool because now they're not going to look back on this Halloween and be like, this was COVID Halloween, you know. Now they're going to look back on it and it was like one of the coolest Halloweens for them. And I was pretty yeah. happy about that. Like, it made me feel good. Uh, I told that to my sister-in-law, and, uh, like, she was super happy about it, that she was able to play that. Uh, their godmother sent them a box with a bunch of candy and cookies and, like, other activities as well. So they had that to work with as well. Like, they, they had a lot of stuff to do. So it was one thing after another. We saw a couple of Halloween movies we saw nice. Hocus Pocus again, and yeah, it was it was a really great afternoon. Like it, like I shut off my phone pretty much the entire weekend because it was also my wife's birthday, and so we mm-hmm. got a chance to celebrate her birthday. Made special meals throughout the day for her. It was just a really fun weekend. I completely disconnected from all work. Uh, she tried to do the same, and with the kids and Halloween, uh, I don't know. I had fun. I'm glad that it turned out to be such a great weekend. Man, that sounds like a lot of fun. You're describing like the games and what you did and with the glow sticks. It's like, that's awesome. I want glow sticks now. (laughs) Here, watch. That is so cool. That is so cool. (laughs) Yeah. Right? (laughs) It's just the rhythm is just spot on. That's awesome. That is so cute. (laughs) Yeah, they did a pretty good job with it. Like I said, I don't know. Maybe I'll do a small clip because I know like Instagram stories is only like 15 seconds and stuff like that. So Mm -hmm. uh, there's at least a good chunk that I wanted to include. But uh, that's what I was going to put on the Discord server. But I don't know. We'll see. I'll find a place to put it. And even if I just do like a 15-second clip on Instagram, I think, um, you know, people will get the idea of what we were doing. But I'm telling you, it was super fun. Now I just want to do more of that just for fun. Like, I don't even care if it's Halloween or anything. I just want to do that just for fun. Like, I want to do yeah. it. I don't want to film them doing it. I want to do it. <laughs> 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 um. So, yeah. I mean, Halloween is officially over. Uh, apparently everyone is forgetting that Thanksgiving is next and we're skipping right over to Christmas. Uh, radio stations yeah. as of this week are blasting Mariah Carey every third song. And, um, <laughs> you know, everywhere you go, whether no matter where you go to the store, uh, shopping online, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas everywhere you go. Yeah. You know, I I love Christmas. It's always been my favorite holiday. Uh, This year, it it feels different than other years, obviously. Um, Yeah. But we're going to make the best of it. I mean, if Halloween was any indication of some of the stuff that we're able to do, then I'm hoping we can come up with some really cool stuff that we can do for Christmas as well. Uh, And for Thanksgiving, obviously. I mean, I I don't know what we're going to do. Obviously, we're not going to do the family dinners like we normally do with like freaking 40 people in one room. Easily. You know, that's definitely (laughs) not going to happen. But yeah. uh, Oh, you know how I was talking about prep and landing recently oh yeah how i love prep and landing and i've always been like i mean we have the dvds or the blu-rays but i was always angry Mm -hmm. that they didn't put them on disney plus so that i can just go back and watch them uh yeah well jingle bam they're coming to disney (laughs) plus this week nice yeah your wish got granted right or they're listening and they realize (laughs) damn hazen's right we got to put them on disney plus like there's yeah we just got to have them uh, so Prep and Landing, Naughty vs. Nice, which was the sequel to Prep and Landing, are all coming to Disney Plus in the U.S., Canada, Australia, and New Zealand on November 6th, which is just a few days or a couple days after we release this episode, which is fantastic. Uh, but New Zealand is actually getting a third short called Operation Secret Santa. And I'm nice. 
kind of jealous that we're not getting it here. <laughs> <clears throat> but, you know, we'll, ha- we'll just have to find a way to watch it in New Zealand. So Somehow. there's always that. <laughs> there's always <laughs> that. Anyhow, speaking of filling in time and doing things, uh, I don't know if you've ever done this, but when I was a kid, uh, I used to draw a lot. I know we've talked about mm-hmm. this before, and I remember when I had my old note, I loved having the stylus, the S Pen with my phone because I could just you know, start drawing directly on my phone. And to be honest with you, it's really one of the things I miss the most about my old phone. Um, I know that now you can get like a really nice Apple Pencil and you can, you know, use an iPad or an iPhone or everything. But I'm actually considering going back to a note just to be able to have that ability to just draw. It just it worked so well and I really enjoyed it. But in the meantime, we were having this conversation like we were doing this roundtable like what's something you used to do as a kid that you miss doing as an adult? It was just like uh, an icebreaker thing for a meeting that we were having, right? And this conversation Uh came up. They're like, oh, I used to draw a lot. I used to color and like all these little random things. And somebody started saying, oh, yeah, you know, as as an adult, they make a lot of adult coloring books. And they have like all these really intricate designs. I was like, I don't have time for a coloring book. Give me an app. (laughs) I'd do it all in an app. So I searched and I found a bunch of coloring apps. And I came upon an app that I had seen people talking about. uh, And I had seen a couple of the pictures that they made called Happy Color. Are you familiar with the Happy Color app? Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, my gosh, yes. (laughs) So the Happy Color app, for those that are not familiar with it, uh, is available uh, in the Apple App Store. And it's available in the Google Play App Store. And it has just different like coloring sheets uh but what Mm -hmm. makes it unique is that it also has licensed disney pixar marvel um there's there's a bunch of like rare and bonus things that they post all of the time the app itself is it's like paint by number basically it gives you a little palette at the bottom uh it has numbers if you zoom into the the sheet that you're coloring and overall, it's pretty fun. And you can tell me how you feel about this because okay. there's certain colors that are in really small spaces where it says you're laying down one color, but it lays down like a gradient or like four different colors yeah. all at once. And I don't think I like that. Really? I Yeah. Like if it makes me feel like they're like, yeah, you don't know how to shade this in properly. But let me do this for you. Oh, no. See, for me, it's more like, all right, cool. Two for one. Really? Oh, (laughs) man. Maybe I'm just being a total grump about it. But Uh, no. Well, no. I mean, okay. put it this way. I'm coming from someone who's actually been on this app for maybe about more than a month. Maybe about more than a month. Two months. Sometime probably over the summer. Let's just say that. So I've actually seen this app go from... You would probably have hated it if you played with it in the summer because they just changed some stuff to where, let's say number 16, let's say number 16, number 16 happens to be all over the color, all all over the picture. Mm -hmm. And now they've made it to where it's like wherever, um, let's say it's in one spot and you have like, you have to color let me just throw out a character. Um, Mickey. Okay. Let's say you have to color Mickey. So all of his colors are going to be in that same uh, range. So it'll uh, be like 7 to 10. Okay. And it used to be really difficult to where I have some that I haven't finished because I can't find the colors. And I don't want to pay for extra stuff. So I'm like, Ugh, I'll get back to it. But... Um, so yeah, when you see those colors that are like woo, freebies, <laughs> so it just comes in handy. <laughs> That's funny. It, yeah. You know, there was a couple, like, I think I did an Elsa and Olaf one that I was missing. Like I had, I was down to one color and as you're mm-hmm. coloring, 
it gives you like a little progress ring around the color that you've selected to kind of indicate yeah. how much more you need to color in that outline, you know, to to get rid of it. And mm-hmm. it was the last color that I needed and it was down to the last fraction and I couldn't find the little pieces. And finally, like, I just zoomed in and I was, like, inching throughout the entire thing. <laughs> and there were these tiny, tiny, like, triangles that you cannot see if you're fully zoomed out and looking at the whole thing. There's no indicators uh, when they're mm-hmm. not filled in. When it's obviously completely white and you have big chunks of it, it's so much easier to find them. So what I started doing was... So when I first started using the app, I would find a color and I would try to go fill in that color everywhere that I knew that it was in the picture, right? And then I would play it back, which is one of the features of this app. Once you're done with it, you can create a little animation of it getting colored in the order that you laid out the colors. And I thought, that's pretty cool. I'm going to start posting these on Instagram, at least to the Podcateers account, because some of these are really nice pictures. Yeah. And as I was coloring them... In my brain, like it felt chaotic that I was like jumping from color to color. And then like I started trying to like fill in everything around kind of like building a puzzle, right? You make the frame and then you kind of fill it in inside. And then I didn't Mm -hmm. like that. And then I started thinking, well, what if I start on one corner and then I make it look like it's flooding with color from like one corner to the rest of it? And so now that's been my my latest challenge to myself, trying to get it to look like it's just like flooding with color from one corner or from the bottom or from any direction. I mean, I've gotten better at it. It's not it Mm -hmm. doesn't look as cool as I thought it was going to because it's very choppy as it lays down the color. But I mean, overall, I'm having fun with it. I don't think I was expecting it to be like, oh, my God, this is the thing that's going to take all my stress away. And this is going to be like, yeah, you know, I'm going to be like completely zen after this. No, that is not the (laughs) case. I will be honest with you. When you get to those little pieces where you cannot find them and you're down to the last color, it will make you want to chuck your phone across the damn room. (laughs) Okay? I'm being real with y'all because that's how I felt. And so like Mel, you just kind of have to walk away from it sometimes (laughs) and then come back and finish it another time. But uh, I'm having fun with it. I didn't think I was going to. I'm considering buying the rest of it i'm I, i'm on the same boat i've the marvel one i'm like yeah oh. i know <laughs> i know it's got some really nice like, stuff you know it won't hurt to do one or two it won't hurt so i'm thinking okay maybe maybe for the holidays i'll treat myself or something i don't know but um yeah, it's it's been pretty cool. I mean, they've been releasing a lot of Disney lately, mm-hmm. which is awesome. Yeah. So I do the do the pictures ever go away? No. There's a couple on there that say rare, and I haven't figured out like if they're only available for like a day or a week or something and then they're just not available again. Like why do they say rare? Well, um a lot of the cases come from their Facebook group. So when you see like a lot of the pictures coming up, it's because they're doing they're doing promos where, you know, they'll ask people, you know, if we could get so many shares or so many retweets, you know, they'll they'll unlock a picture or they'll unlock this or they'll unlock, you know, certain ones and whatnot. Um, So you're constantly I mean, I don't think there's been a day where I'm not getting a new picture. Nice. I mean, there's so many. Nice. For a free app. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. I mean, there's tons of them available for free. Mm-hmm. I finished in the last week. I've been, uh, I don't know. I'd probably spend like a good 30 minutes. I, if you sit down and do the entire thing, it could probably take you a good 30 minutes to finish a picture. Yeah. I finished about seven in the last two weeks. Sounds about I right. I did an inside out one. I did Miguel getting Ernesto's guitar. Mm-hmm. I did Uncle Scrooge in his money bin, Elsa and Olaf, Philip and Maleficent, Belle yeah. and the Beast, like where it's the raining scene and she's like crying over him. Uh, and one with Boo, Mike and Sully. Nice. Yeah. So those are the ones I've started. Nice. I've also started two other ones. I started one of the Avengers ones, which I haven't finished because I ran into the I can't find these last two pieces. 
And the last one that I started was um, Carl with his house and with Russell climbing up the side of a mountain. So that's the latest one that I've been working on. Honestly, I did not think I was going to enjoy this app as much as I have. Um, FYI, mm-hmm. this is not a paid advertisement. No. Nope. <laughs> this, I mean, I'm just telling you, it's been something that I've been using to pass the time. And there's been so many Disney things in there. Marvel, Pixar. Uh, it's been fun. The only thing that would yeah. make it slightly f- more fun for me is if I had like a pen or a pencil that I could draw on my phone with. Because even though you're tapping the color, like having that pen or that pencil that makes you feel like you're actually laying down color versus my fat fingers trying to like press the screen (laughs) for me would give me more serenity. You know, it's it's that serenity now moment. I haven't reached the other pamphlet yet, but it's serenity (laughs) now. Anybody that understood that reference, high five. (laughs) <laughs> I didn't know what that is. I'm going to, I'm just going to be honest. I'll right tell you now. on the side. I'll tell you on the side. I okay. want to give it away. <laughs> um, oh, speaking of apps, uh, I saw this mm-hmm. article about this app that apparently makes you look like a Disney character. Now okay. on TikTok, people are taking like videos of themselves and they're posting it, uh, which is weird because the filter is actually not from TikTok. It's actually a Snapchat filter that they're using, saving their video where it makes your eyeballs look all big, like an Mm -hmm. animated cartoon and stuff. It's actually kind of fun. I've used it before, but this one, like this app changes your facial structure and everything. Like it changes your chin, your nose, your eyeballs. It does give you the big Disney eyeballs, but Mm -hmm. you do have to, purchase credits in order to use it i think it's like four dollars and then you can get 10 tunify pictures done um they look okay interesting yeah they're yeah we'll go with interesting uh we'll go with interesting but i mean we were talking about this earlier and i think your idea was way better yeah i mean if you're gonna pay for picture or someone to or something to make you into a tune i mean i i personally would pay a little bit more and have someone else you know do that for me someone who's an artist um and there's so many out there so i would rather do that and support an artist yeah that could use that fund you know and it's a win-win I, I don't know how I feel about paying $4 for something that's kind of... Because, mm-hmm. yeah, those faces, are they're a little... It doesn't... How do I say this? You would get most of your features or how you are if someone were to draw as, draw you than an app that would change your face. Yeah. That's just me. You know what it reminded me of the moment I saw it? The, what? The fairy godmother in Paris. Oh! <gasps> Or the Jessica Rabbit? Oh yes, does doesn't it kind of <laughs> remind you of that? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. It does. I, I don't know. It it does. Uh, so we're gonna post pictures of this. You can either go to the blog post podcasters dot com slash three thirty three, uh, or join us on Discord. You, we could chat about it there. But I mean, I, I, I'm again. The software just started. I'm sure that they'll fine tune it and everything. But I like your idea. Uh, I mean, for yeah. several reasons. One. There's a lot of really talented Disney artists out there. Uh, There's a lot of cast members that are very talented that can do this for you as well. Uh, And considering a lot of the stuff that's been going on recently, which we're going to talk about in a moment, uh, this is a great way to support them. You know, if Mm -hmm. you can find a a cast member that does this type of work, pay them for a commission. It's you're so much better off than than one of these apps, but that's just oh, me. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, join the conversation. Let us know what you guys think about it. Podcasters.com slash three thirty three, uh, or join us on Discord. Uh, the link is available on Podcasters.com. If you click on the Discord icon, you'll be able to join the server from there. But yeah, uh, with all the news that's been happening uh, with cast members, it's just so crazy. It just uh, just when you thought that it couldn't get worse. Like, it feels like it's getting worse. 
Yeah. And a lot of it is just because of our current situation. You know, um, there was more information about more Disneyland and Walt Disney World cast members that were getting laid off recently. There was shows at Walt Disney World that closed. You know, we saw shows here, Making the Magical Map. We saw um, mm-hmm. Frozen, Live at the Hyperion closed down. But now Walt Disney World, it looks like Citizens of Main Street, uh, Mickey's Royal Friendship Fair Dancers, Move It, Shake It, uh, Mosca Dancers, The Mosca Dance Singers, Jedi Training Academy, Hoop to Do Review, Laugh Floor, The Monsters, Inc. Laugh, um, is it Laugh Floor or Laugh Factory? I don't remember what it is. I think it's Laugh Floor. Is it Laugh Floor? I always forget. Uh, the Lion King show that they have, along with the Nemo show, oh, Beauty and man. the Beast, Indiana Jones. I mean, it's it's almost a thousand cast members additionally that they laid off from all of those shows. At this point in time, going into the holidays, going into Thanksgiving, you know, it's a lot to take in. It's yeah. it's difficult to figure out, you know, what we can do. Uh, and one idea that I had. Actually, we'll talk about that in a moment. But um, the the good news about these shows is that Disney did release a statement. I did want to say that. that okay. Uh, there's been a lot of bad news, but one there was a, an official statement from the Disney company that basically says they're bringing back the shows. Uh, and I copied the statement. I want to remember what site I copied it from, but I'll include that after. But uh, the statement basically said... Walt Disney World Resort offers a treasure trove of experiences for guests of all ages. We recognize that part of the magic of visiting any Disney park is seeing your favorite Disney friends and discovering one-of-a-kind shows and performances. Since reopening, we've continued to offer modified character experiences and entertainment throughout our resort, while also taking the appropriate steps for the health and safety of our guests and cast members. Recently, we've had to make some difficult decisions to reduce our workforce as the business impacts from the COVID-19 pandemic have become more long-lasting than anyone could have predicted. As a result, we've had to pause many live shows and entertainment experiences at our resort for longer than originally anticipated. While it's impossible at this time to fully replace the incredible entertainment that existed throughout our parks before the pandemic, we are offering live entertainment in new ways wherever possible, including character cavalcades in all four parks and appearances like discovering joy from inside out, frolicking on the lawn near Imagination Pavilion in Epcot. Additionally, we're featuring modified shows such as the popular For the First Time in Forever, a Frozen sing-along celebration at Disney's Hollywood Studios, and live musical performances like the Main Street Philharmonic monic in magic kingdom or discovery island drummers at disney's animal kingdom this extends our seasonal offerings with with halloween underway and the holidays right around the corner in fact the fan favorite voices of liberty are set to make their return and join the jamiters and mariachi cobre at the american gardens theater during the upcoming taste of epcot international festival of the holidays beginning on november 27th Determining which shows can return and when is a complex process. As with the rest of our phased opening, we will also consider the guidance of health officials and government agencies in determining when the time will be right to adjust capacity. And as soon as it is, a, it is appropriate, we will start to bring additional entertainment back. Like most of our fans, we know that our beloved entertainment casts are an incredibly special and essential part of the Disney experience. We look forward to the day when we can welcome back more live entertainment to our parks, and we will share more news about these announcements as we're able to do so. So, uh, a ray of light, at least. Yeah. Um, it's a really weird week for Disney because, you know, they made these announcements, and around the same time, there was a lot of posts of them executing some changes throughout the parks that you know a lot of people didn't find 100 percent favorable in light of right. these layoffs uh, and it's completely understandable i know exactly where they're coming from when it comes to this but on the plus side at least there's you know some hope that these entertainers are going to come back and these cast members are going to be able to get their job back once things begin to settle down uh, but yeah, it's been super tough. Um, here in California, the parks are still closed. 
Uh, it got to the point where there was a handful of mayors from around California that basically told the governor, hey, look, you have to change your guidelines. And Deadline shared some of what the letter said. The quote says, the guidelines put forth by your administration were released within the framework of prioritizing public health and safety for guests and employees. This is the right focus. However, economic and public health are not mutually exclusive goals. We are concerned that the state's guidelines would push reopening of large theme parks up to a year out, which would have significant negative impacts on hundreds of thousands of jobs, thousands of small businesses, and billions in operating revenue for our cities. And the mayor of Anaheim, L.A., San Diego, San Jose, Fresno, Bakersfield, Riverside, and Santa Ana all signed it. Oh, wow. Yeah. We understand how difficult this is, you know, because with cases spiking in the last yeah. several weeks, uh, Disneyland Paris is reclosing because of the spikes that have been happening. It's yeah. possible that Walt Disney World may end up closing as well again because of the recent spikes. So, I mean, we're going to keep an eye on this and, you know, we'll report back, obviously, what we hear. But it's a tough situation to be in because obviously you don't want to put people in a situation where they're going back just to get sick. Yeah, that's been like the one thing we've been worried about is health. And yeah, Disney's doing everything that they can in order to make sure that that doesn't happen. But I mean, I don't know. It's just it's a really, really difficult situation. So again, we'll keep an eye on this. We'll keep talking about it. Um and I mean, there's just so many changes. Like the last thing that I heard was that Disney was considering canceling annual passes now. And I don't know what the validity of that statement is. Uh, mm -hmm. It's probably just a blog that started it up somewhere. And, you know, it I mean, it would make sense. Right. Because, yeah, if especially here in California, the majority of the people that go to the parks are annual pass holders. We've always justified purchasing an annual pass over doing other things. You know, like we've always like had people ask us like, well, why don't you go on vacation? You spend all your money on Disney. It's like, well, Disney is a vacation for us. The fact that at any point, you know, during the week, we could just pack up our car and go down to Disneyland and spend a few hours, watch a parade, watch the fireworks, ride a couple of attractions, uh, watch a show or two, have dinner, spend time with friends, whatever. It didn't matter. Yeah. But the ability for us to go and have fun in a place that we love was completely worth it for us to get that annual pass. And now obviously over time, getting an annual pass changed, right? At first you had to pay it mm -hmm. all up front and then they made uh, payments available and the purchases of annual passes skyrocketed and then it just felt that the park was always packed when mm -hmm. those payment plans became available. But, I mean, if the payment plans weren't available, we probably wouldn't have done it either because we had to buy four passes. You know, yeah. that's almost five grand that you're dropping all at once if that was still the way to purchase it. And if they get rid of annual passes, then what happens? Right? Yeah. I mean, how many people do you think will stop going? How many people do you think will, are, are going to be willing to drop $120 weekly uh, to go? I mean, if you, if you think about it, th this is the way that I would justify it. Yeah. So we had the signature pass, right? And we mm -hmm. added the parking and all that good stuff to it. So the signature pass was what, like twelve, thirteen, fourteen hundred bucks or something like that? Roughly about, I want to say about eleven hundred. About eleven hundred. So let's just round it up yeah. to twelve hundred, okay? Okay. So at twelve hundred bucks, if you visited once a month, you're talking about a hundred dollars, you know, which is roughly the cost of a ticket. Mm -hmm. And so our goal was to go at least once every month. Because then it felt like we justified that cost. Right. There were some months where we went three, four, five, six times in a month. 
And then we totally got our money's worth on top of the fact that we still had discounts and, you know, in some cases we had access to other things that others didn't as pass holders, right? Right. And AP days and all those little fun little activities and events that they would do. Uh, now, I will say that there were months that I didn't go at all. Right. Uh, especially this last year. Now, I, and I don't mean like 2020. Like, I mean 2019. Like, 2019 was insane for me at work. I was so tired. I was working all the time. And I remember. I, and I remember there was uh, like a couple of spans where I didn't go for like three or four months at a time. And mm -hmm. I remember, and you know what's crazy? I was going over some old videos because I was trying to like figure out like, are there any vlogs that I could possibly finish now that I have a little bit of time? And I saw the video that I had recorded the day that we went to go see Santa at DCA. Aww. December 24th, 2019 was the last day I went to Disneyland. It was the day that I hit level 40 playing Pokemon Go because I remember it was the last day I was going to be able to get in before my pass didn't let me in for the last two weeks. Yeah. And I remember I had been saving getting level 40 in Pokemon Go for almost yeah. three months at that point because my goal had always been to hit level 40 at Sleeping Beauty Castle, which I did. Yeah. And so... <laughs> Uh, I got pretty nostalgic. I got a little teary eyed because I remember how special that day was for me. And then I also realized like, damn, that was the last time I stepped foot in the park. Like, I, yeah. I, it was just super crazy to me, but yeah, like there was, there was these spans in 2019 where I didn't visit the park, you know, all that much. So did I get my money's worth in 2019, even though I probably only went four or five times the entire year? Yeah, I did, you know, because yeah. it to me, it was valuable to be able to go whenever I wanted. And if I went four or five times, six times, whatever, that's that's fine, because in previous years, I took super advantage of having that pass, you know, and yeah, that's where the big change is going to happen for a lot of Southern California residents, that if you don't have the ability to go whenever you want or if they implement some kind of reservation system going forward, how many people are going to continue wanting to go? Especially if they do cancel the passes and you got to pay 125 bucks every time that you want to go. There's just so many questions and so many variables to the situation. Like it could go this way. It could go that way. And that's the thing. We just don't know. Yeah. Cause it's just, First time for everything. So we're just like trying to figure out uh, whew, what's going on. But yeah, we'll, we'll see. Yeah. We'll and, see. And I do want to make it clear that uh, the stuff I'm talking about is not something that Disney's announced. Okay. This is just things that we've been thinking about, things that have been floating around. Just, you know, because we don't know what's going to happen. Obviously, the annual passes yeah. stopped earlier this year. You couldn't buy a new one. Uh, you did have the option to renew it. You did have the option to stop paying and then figure out what you were going to do once the, everything was available again. You had the option to stop for a little bit, kind of put it on pause. Uh, but in in many cases, there's still people that are paying for annual passes, especially those that are going to Walt Disney World. And, I mean, I don't know. It, what you were promised at one point versus what you're getting you know, isn't really there for the price that you're paying, you know, I'm, and, and it's uncontrollable. Like it's, there's not really much you can do about that because everything is a limited experience right now, you mm -hmm. know? So yeah, like you said, so many variables are up in the air. I think sooner than later, we're going to hear what's going to happen with annual passes. But I think before we hear anything about that, I think we're going to have to hear news about when and how the parks are going to open. And if yeah. this letter that was sent by all of these mayors is going to make a difference, um, you know, there's a lot of ways that you can reopen. Like, you know, the idea that we talked about an episode or two ago about making it like an outdoor restaurant, um, you know, having the ability to do things like they could totally do that with food and wine. 
Oh, yeah, totally. All of those things are cues that are outside. The only thing they would have to figure out is how to space them so that there's a little more social distancing or limit the experiences like so that they're only allowing a specific amount of people in at once, you know, so that they're not overcrowding the lines, that they have cast members walking around or something with their own PPE, obviously, that are reminding people, hey, you guys are too close together, you know, so that they're separating, Mm -hmm. keeping some distance. But, ah, just so much. So it's frustrating, you know, and it's frustrating that we can't really do anything about it. You know, that's the most frustrating part. Uh, And we're just kind of stuck in this holding pattern. And as we kind of see all these, this news about, you know, these shows that are ending, you know, cast members getting laid off this last week, the Disneyland Today Twitter account was basically frozen and they started directing everybody to go get alerts through the Disneyland app because I think they ended up laying off their entire social media team. Oof. It's super tough right now. Um, mm-hmm. There's a lot of cast members that, like we've talked about this before, the cast members that have provided us magic and now, you know, it's our turn. There's a lot of initiatives out there uh, that are helping cast members, like Cast Member Pantry, a couple of uh-huh. other things like that. Uh, cast Member Pantry has officially expanded to California. They were managing a lot of their stuff out of Florida. They're officially now available in California as well. But uh, one thing that I did see was a lot of people were doing these fundraising events for Second Harvest Food Bank through a couple of different websites and I was looking at what they were offering and it said like one dollar helps provide the equivalent of three meals and I thought man that's if we could raise like 500 bucks that's like 1500 meals that they can give out to people that's fantastic that's a wonderful ratio so like this is something that I've been thinking about for the last week now I know that we were fundraising for chalk because the chalk walk was our latest team boat willy event but Mm -hmm. All of you listening, please join the conversation. Let us know how you feel because I'm considering halting the Chalk Walk uh, fundraiser. Uh, And if there's people that want to donate to Chalk, our link is still available. It's not going to go down. You could still go to it. But I'm considering doing one of these fundraisers for cast members so that we can raise some money. Because if there's organizations like Second Harvest Food Bank here in Orange County that are able to provide meals for so many cast members that are out of work right now, I'd rather shift our focus for a little bit to that to help cast members. Uh, Please uh, join the conversation over on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, on Discord, whatever you you like. But we're going to need help. You know, we're going to need help spreading the word. We're going to need help uh, retweeting, reposting the link to this fundraiser that we want to do. And uh, none of the money goes to us. It's all done through the yourfooddrive.org site, which is for Second Harvest Food Bank. Uh, There's a lot of other vloggers and there's a lot of other people on Twitter that I've been following that are doing their own. Some of their fundraisers run for a week, two weeks, one month. And so I think we should do the same. You know, they've brought us a lot of magic. Now it's time that we try to provide a little bit of magic for them. Definitely. I would love to do this. I mean, like you said, they created the magic. Let's do it back for them, especially right now since we're hitting into, you know, we're in November. So what's coming up? The holidays. Mm -hmm. Let's just make it a little easier for them. You know, give them some cushions, something, comfort. Um, Yeah, I'm excited for this. I want to do this. Um. I'm actually part of, well, I don't have the exact information yet, but I'm actually seeing this. And like how you mentioned, there's others doing this. I'm going to be part of a auction and there's actually about, I want to say at least 15 to 20 of us, small shops. Oh, cool. And um, what we're doing is we're just donating so many different things from accessories to ears to you name it. And like I said, we don't have the date yet, um, but once I do, I'll bring it up and everything is just for cast members. We just want to raise whatever we can 
anything is more than what we've had before, if that makes sense. Yeah. No, that's awesome. So, yeah. So, I mean, like I said, I don't have the date yet, but once we do, definitely I'll just spam it out. We're just all coming together for them, and it's just a great feeling. I mean, it feels good giving back. It yeah. really does. You know, we've talked about how regardless of what you do or how you interact in the parks, a cast member was responsible for that. You know, whether yeah. it was somebody that was cleaning, whether it was somebody that made your food, whether it was one of the Imagineers, whether it doesn't matter. A cast member mm -hmm. helped provide that. And, you know, now it's our turn. So yep. uh, we're going to get that going. The information will be available soon. So keep an eye out on our social media and on the website for more information when that is available. Um, we had some stuff that was donated for auctions that we were going to do for chalk. Uh, I had mm -hmm. several people reach out to me with donations that they were going to reach out for chalk. Uh, I'm going to see how this is going to function and let them know that we're going to put a halt on the chalk stuff for now. Uh, because mm -hmm. I think the chalk walk, because it's virtual, uh, I think it's going to happen sometime in February of 2021. They haven't given us an exact date yet, but that's kind of what I'm thinking is going to happen right now. Uh, just based yeah. on some of the language that's on their website and how they're treating uh, gifts and everything that people are donating for the chalk walk. Uh, so I figure we could do this now. We can really push for the chalk walk in January, but it's going to be there. Like our link isn't going to go away. If you want to donate to the Children's Hospital of Orange County, chalkwalk.org slash teamboatwilly is our page. You're welcome to, to head over there. Um, but the auctions that we were going to have, uh, like I said, we're going to put those on hold just for a second. Uh, just because we want to concentrate on helping as many cast members as possible. So uh, stay tuned for that. One last thing I wanted to talk about today, and that is if you've been around for some time, you may remember that in episode 279, when we armchair imagineered Adventureland, we had a handful of ideas that revolved around the concept of an escape room. Mm -hmm. And we always felt that Disney having some kind of escape room would be super fun. You know, just yeah. having Disney characters, just that Disney storytelling, right? That's what it's about. Right. It would just be a, a really great experience. And this week, that's finally <laughs> going to be a thing. It's only taken like six months, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not at Disneyland. No. But the Walt Disney Family Museum. Which is pretty awesome. Yeah. You know, they've been closed just like all the other businesses. And they've announced that on November 5th, they're going to be reopening their doors. Uh, we had a chance to visit the Walt Disney Family Museum a couple of years ago. And, ah, oh, man, I loved it. It was such a fun experience walking through Walt's life through all of those pictures and videos. They have a lot of little interactive elements throughout the museum, like how you would record Foley and music for a cartoon, for instance. And they have, like, little instruments set up on a table. And they have a screen playing with cues where you hit the instruments and then it records the music. Nice. Uh, they have another building in the back that has different exhibits. Um, normally they run for a handful of months, maybe half a year, and they switch to something else. It's a small building, but you could mm -hmm. spend an entire day there just looking and, and oogling at every single thing that's there because that's what I did. Like I just <laughs> felt like I didn't want to leave. I wanted to be there the whole day. Uh, I can't wait till we have an opportunity to go back. But anyway, back to this escape room thing. So the Walt Disney Family Museum is doing an escape room from their website. It says it's a one-hour, 100% remote team-building activity. This is the description. 
Get your team connected and working together from the comfort of home to find hidden clues, solve puzzles, and escape before the time is up. Moderated by a museum storyteller guide, this virtual team bonding experience helps boost morale and introduces your team to the inspiring story of Walt Disney and his most beloved innovations, including Mickey Mouse, Disneyland, and much more. Uh, participants join a video conference remotely via Zoom. Our enthusiastic storyteller guide provides a brief introduction, then begins a curated adventure with an insider look at some of our most recognizable and unique artifacts. You're basically getting a private tour of the museum and you're playing a game. That's rad. Yeah. And the fact that it revolves around Walt was it's just like... It, it sounds like fun. It totally does. And just being in, oh, just doing an escape room that one hour, you get away. It doesn't feel like an hour. It feels like forever, but it's fun mm -hmm. forever. So it's tempting. It is. It, it's totally tempting. Oh, yeah. I mean, it is $500 for up to 10 participants. So obviously in order to minimize the amount paid per person you would want to try to get you know the 10 people and then it's about 50 dollars per person uh it is i would say it's about on par if you can get all 10 people uh, it's about on par with what other escape rooms cost um yeah because a virtual escape room is actually something i've been pretty excited about because uh at work I'm a member of one of the committees that tries to do activities for our department and they put on a lot of the, the meetings and we're in charge of some of the media stuff and everything. And I've been considering doing a, a few of these virtual escape rooms. So I've been researching them a lot. It seems like such a fun concept. And if this is in any way like the ones that I've seen where they kind of have these like 360 views where someone in the escape room, like in the Zoom chat, will say to the guide, uh, okay, go look under the red carpet that's right behind you. And then they walk back, they lift it, and you might find a clue. The person narrating reads the clue, and then you kind of go from there. If it's like that, except you're getting all the Disney stuff on top of it, that's super fun. Yeah. I. I <laughs> I think we'd spend like time geeking out and a little bit of focusing, but I think we'd be ge geeking out the whole time. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how many of these adventures are going to have. It says that it's a curated adventure, but I don't know if this is one of those things where you can repeat without hearing the same story again. Uh, I mean, if they came up with like five different ones and then they ask you, have you done this before? And then, you know, we did escape room one or escape room B or whatever. Uh, yeah. It could be repeatable, um, but I don't know. It just seems really fun. Uh, if anybody out there has a chance to do this, send us a message. I'd love to know what the experience was like. Uh, I don't yeah. think they're going to let you record any of it or they'll give you any type of video because they want to keep it a secret. This isn't like a real escape room where you can go vlog it, right? Obviously, this is a Zoom call. And uh, I, I feel like on the FGP happy hour calls, we've gotten pretty creative about how we can play games on there. So mm -hmm. like this kind of feels like a mixture of all of that. So I don't know, maybe we should do an escape room on one of the happy hour calls. Okay. So I will say this. Once you do one, you're going to do, you're going to want to do more. No, I mean like we should come up with our own. <gasps> yes. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like we should try to come up with our own. That would be fun. Yeah. Huh. And we just, I could just, the light bulbs are going off. So I know. Yeah. It's crazy. Anyway, I, I just wanted to mention that because I know we were super excited about talking about it when we, when we were first armchair Imagineering uh, adventure land. Mm -hmm. If you want to listen to that episode, uh, it's episode 279. Also, if you want to check out any of the other armchair Imagineering episodes that we've done, if you go to podcasters.com up in the menu, we have a section specifically for armchair Imagineering episodes. You can go to blog, it'll drop down a menu, select armchair Imagineering. 
You can also select a chat with, which is all of the interviews that we've had on the podcast. Uh, some of those people include Disney legends like Bob Gurr, Rolly Crump. We've had the opportunity to speak with some amazing people that work within the Disney company, like Brian Crosby, who's a creative director for themed entertainment at Marvel. Recently, we had on Josh Shipley, who worked at Walt Disney Imagineering for 21 years before he went off to help start a, a totally new theme park experience. Uh, we had Matthew Serrano, who did the Halix film. Artists like Jared Mariyama. Our pal Jeff Bayham from Doom Buggies was on Good really, stuff. really early on in the podcast. I mean, it's it's awesome. I love when we have an opportunity to have people on. Uh, so you can check those out as well. But yeah, creating our own escape room Let's talk more about that because I think one of the FGP happy hour calls would be fun if we could come up with one. If you're wondering what the FGP squad is, uh, it's a group of listeners just like you that help us out with a monthly contribution via Patreon. Uh, If you want more information on how you can become part of the FGP squad family and join us on these uh, happy hour calls, you can go to podcateers.com slash FGP for more information. You'll see a link to our Patreon and you'll find more information on how you can join, get access to specific channels uh, on our Discord server and a few other perks when you join. And of course, to all of the members of the FGP squad, we just want to send a huge thank you for all of their continued support because it's their support that help make these episodes of Pocketeers happen. So a huge thanks to all of them. I think that's it. I think we're going to wrap it up for today, Mel. Yeah. I, I kind of want to start <laughs> writing down ideas. <laughs> yeah. The gears are grinding now. I I mean, <laughs> obviously everybody would want to do like a haunted mansion one, right? Cause it seems like the most escape roomy. Like uh, we did a lot of stuff based on like Adventureland because that's what we were armchair imagineering. But mm, yeah, yeah. like a pirates one, a haunted mansion one, a Winnie the Pooh one. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I I I almost judged you, but I'm glad you. <laughs> I'm glad you saved it at the end there. <laughs> All right, that's going to wrap it up for this episode, everyone. Uh, Keep an eye out on all our social media and on the website for information on when we start fundraising for cast members. The links and all that information will be available soon. So until next time, keep dreaming, keep moving forward, and always remember to pass on the magic. Have a fantastic week, everyone. Bye. Bye.